guys my name is ankush gaurav and i welcome you to gone to series in the previous tutorial we learned how to support xml format for these rest apis so after that change now these rest apis support two formats json format as well as xml format so now when a client is going to make a request to get response from either of these REST APIs, it's client's responsibility to specify within the request itself what format server has to use to produce the response, JSON or XML. So here when I make a GET request on this REST API means for this first REST API, I got to specify here using a key accept and its value as application slash xml if i want to get response in xml and if i want to get response in json then i have to use its value as application slash json like this because whatever i've just described in a very brief manner i explained in detail till the last tutorial now let's proceed further and try to learn in this tutorial how to restrict a specific rest api controller method to support only one format so it could be the case that your application is supporting more than one formats you know like here in this application we are supporting xml and we are also supporting json but what if we want a specific rest api controller method to support only one format not more than one format so how to achieve that well that can be achieved by making use of produces argument to request mapping annotation so all we need to do is to write here produces with its value as media type dot application underscore xml underscore value so if I keep produces value as media type dot application underscore XML underscore value, then I'm here forcing Spring MVC framework that this REST API controller method must support only one format and that format is XML. If I change its value from XML to JSON, in that case, it's going to support only JSON. So let's keep its value as JSON and see what happens when we now make a GET request on this REST API. So I'm making here a GET request on this REST API with the, the value of accept as application slash JSON and uh, that is what this REST API controller method supports. So I expect that it is going to send me the response properly and that's what has happened. Now, if I change this value from JSON to XML, what's going to happen? Let's observe. So what we expect, what we expect is, as this method doesn't support XML because of this argument, so now I should not get a valid response from the server in this case. So let's test this out. Cool. So here we haven't received a valid response from the server. If in the logs I check, it says unknown exception occurred, could not find acceptable representation. It means when we requested for XML format from this REST API, it simply said no to us. It said, I do not support this format. And if I choose here XML instead of JSON, well, now we will get a valid response for XML and a invalid response for JSON. Let's check that very quickly. So for XML now, I should be getting a proper response. Cool. So here I've got the response in XML format. But now if I here request for JSON format, which is not supported by this REST API, I must here get an invalid response let's check that out cool i haven't got a valid response instead of that i've got a 
an exception instead of a valid response and if I check the logs I get here a warning which states that whatever response format you requested for well that is not supported by this REST API okay the way I explain things for this REST API controller method same way you can test out things for this another REST API controller method you can make it support only one format by making use of produces argument with request mapping annotation the way I showed you over here by keeping its value either as a you know media type dot application XML value or media type dot application JSON value the way I described here for this STP control method in the next tutorial we will learn the use of response entity annotation and in addition to that we are also going to understand how to support http put kind of requests with a rest api in a spring mbc framework all right guys a big thank you for learning rest api concepts using spring mbc framework with me if you have any feedback or comments please provide them below the video or simply write to me using this email id for all of your queries please hit the like button if you really like this video and do not forget to subscribe to my youtube channel gone to series and i'm gonna catch in the next part of this tutorial